In this next chapter, we're going to be looking a little bit closer at working with some blend modes and also taking a look at some pattern inside of Photoshop CS6. Well, let's take a look at our logo over here. Now, we did discuss in the previous chapter many different ways of creating the effects that we can see in our layer styles. However, sometimes you want to come in here and actually add something that's a little bit difficult to achieve with the layer styles, or maybe you just want a little bit more control over the way your item looks. If you go to KillerSite's u4.psd, you can see that in our logo that I've created right up here, there are a number of different elements that we don't have in the one that we created in KillerSite's one. Let's take a look. First of all, there is this highlight or sheen that we have at the top of our icon. This is something that we'll create together in just a second. Another element is the little bit of shadow that we see down at the bottom right here. Now this is something that we'll reproduce in all of the ones up on top as well as the ones down at the bottom in these larger icons. So. If we return back to Killer Sites 1, remember this is the file that we've been creating and working on ourselves. If you haven't saved it already, Command S or Control S on a PC just to make sure that it is saved. Let's select that logo one more time. I'm going to zoom in a little bit closer on it as well. So the first thing I want to do is to create that little bit of a highlight effect at the top of this item. Now there's many different ways of doing so, but what I'm going to be doing is just working with a simple little elliptical marquee tool to create a selection. Now all I really want to be doing is growing a selection from the top of this area right here. So as I start creating my selection, press Alt to make it grow from the center, and also press Shift to make it constrain its proportions. Now if you don't like it being so round, you can take shift off and you could just turn it into something that's a little bit more oval shaped like the one we have here. Don't worry if it's getting larger than the actual original shape. We'll mask it out later if we need to. You can make it as big or as small as you would like. I think I'll do something along these lines. Got a little bit smaller, so I'm going to control Z or command Z to undo that. And I'll just try it again, but try to make it a little bit larger. Okay, now that we've got this position in place, what I want to do is fill it with a gradient color. Now the gradient that I'm going to be using, as you can see here, if we click on gradient, I want to be using a linear gradient, and I'm going to choose, so I clicked on it to edit the gradient, I'm going to choose to make it white going to, well, white again, that doesn't seem to make much sense, but what I'm going to be doing is selecting the top portion here and setting the opacity to zero. So it's white in the middle and it goes to opaque. Now what I'm going to do is to choose to create that gradient. Now you might be wondering why is it giving me the no symbol that we have right here? And that's because we're going to need to create a layer upon which we can put our gradient. We'll name that in a second. So I'll come down here and I'll just create my gradient so that it goes out like this. Now, as you can see, it didn't seem to necessarily constrain to my selection. So I'm going to control Z, undo that for a minute. And we'll try it again. If I come down this way, you can see that I had the gradient reversed. And because it was reversed, it sort of created something that I didn't really want. So I'm going to control Z, undo that again, or command Z on a Mac. And I'll uncheck the reverse. And now, if I were to come down here and create something like this, still did the wrong thing. So I'm going to undo that. I'm going to start from this way. We start at the bottom, and we'll just move it up like that. Now, I can also sort of move that around and do many different things with it. I can also start on the outside and move in like this, or I can move it down this way, and create many, many different types of gradient effects. So it's really up to you to determine exactly how you want to do that. So I just undid that again a couple of times, and even if you wanted to reverse it and try it again like this, or if I undo that and try it again like this, let me undo that. Maybe I'll just start it over here 
and create less of the effect as we go out. So we've got this little line in place. If you press Control D to deselect, really all we see is this highlight of white. But notice, as soon as we come in here and we set the blend mode, notice where we're doing that. We select the layer, and under normal, I'm going to say something like overlay. And take a look. We've got a much lighter version of that green. It still doesn't give me the hard edge line that I want it to. So I'm going to undo that one more time. And let's try it again. Create another new layer. And this time, I'm going to come in here with a rounded rectangle, or rather, just the ellipse. So I'll come right around this point again. I'm going to press Alt to sort of drag that out this way. Now what I want to be doing is filling this with a gradient. So if I come in here, I can choose the gradient. And when we have a gradient like this one, a linear gradient, as you can see, I can also do the same thing we did before. I can change this to white. I can come in here, and I could change its opacity to zero. So shape layers can have some really interesting opacity amounts that we can come in and give it. So notice that. It's kind of a hard edge going to transparency. So now that we've got that in place, I'm going to just make sure, just double click, make sure if we select that, that I have it in the right area. And I think what I'll do is just switch this around, maybe going this way. And I think what we need to do is really just switch the opacities if I wanted to get something like that happening. And notice, there we go. I've got this going in that direction as well. So check it out. By creating it in this fashion, what I've done is I've created a much more harder edge. So to this as well, if I double click it and I say shine, let's make the shine layer be in overlay. And that gives us a much brighter version. And still, when I click out, you can see that we've got this hard edge right there. So that's a really nice way of sort of applying white element. And when you're working with white, overlays, soft lights, will give you very distinctive and interesting effects. So that's a key common element that we can work with. So overlay and white always works really well. Now the last thing I want to be doing before we go to our next movie is just making sure that none of this circular element will show up outside of our particular icon. You could even move it down if you wish and sort of reposition it depending on what you need exactly. Can nudge it with your arrow keys if that helps. Now, if I want to create a little mass that will hide anything on the outside, all I got to do is to click on the logo. But first, I'm going to press Control on a PC or Command on a Mac. Then, if I click on it, it creates an outline of my shape. I'll select the shine layer, and then I'll come down here and just choose Add Layer Mask. So now we've got a very small and simple mask. It doesn't really look like there's anything happening because when you have white on white, the overlay effect doesn't really show up. But if I were to change this, for example, to just normal, you can see that the effect is only inside of the shape. It's not on the outside. So that's a really nice way of doing that. You can experiment with things like vivid light, but it's not really what I want. Overlay, white, is great because what it does is it highlights the color that's underneath it and that gives us a nice little green effect right here. So come back in the next movie and I'm going to show you how we can go about creating a custom drop shadow and it's one that we'll use with some filters.